Good morning everyone, Donut here. Welcome to a daily vlog. I don't do these enough. Probably gonna go grab some breakfast. I'm kind of thinking about getting a new bow today too because I'm going all in on the uh, the whole bow hunting thing. I figure if I get like a really, really, really good bow now, not that mine's not really, really good, but if I get like one of the top of the line bows now, that will serve me well for the next few years. little bunker update for you guys uh, I haven't seen him since yesterday morning um, there he is right there look see he's fat and happy the camera won't focus 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 camera won't focus focus you do you ho oh it focuses as he's going in there but you see him he's okay he's alive and well Matt there's your bunker update for the day. Ooh, something cool that I saw today. Uh, Nick Irving, also known as Reaper, the, the ex-Army SF Ranger guy who's always in Demolition Ranch's videos, uh, he got robbed by a dude, and it looks like he either beat the hell out of the dude or did something, but it showed him restraining this guy on the ground. And so I'm trying to get in contact with Nick to tell me the story about the robbery for a video for the main channel. So I'm hoping he'll hit me up. It's hard doing these vlogs because when I don't really have anything going on, it feels like it's boring as hell, but maybe I should just do daily vlogs anyways, even if they're boring. I think I could always find something interesting to talk about though. Twerk's feeling better at least. He's feeling better. You got your ass kicked, but at least you're doing okay now. See, look, he wants to go outside and get his ass kicked some more. Jeeves pissed on a mattress last night, like a butthole. I don't know what his problem is. We take him out 10 times a day. You don't get any pits. You get pokes, you little butthole. This is pretty cool. I've never seen anything like this. Look, it's like a it's like a ratcheting strap, and it comes with all these gymnastic rings and monkey bars and stuff, and you hang between two trees and just play on it. They got the slack net for it. You know, I would get this for John, but I don't have any trees in my yard. I had one, but a drunk driver ran it over. This is something I've never tried. They have freeze-dried, pre-cooked mills here, and I've never even heard of that. Chili mac with beef, chicken fajita bowl, beef stew, breakfast skillet, hash browns, and scrambled eggs made with pork sausage, pappies, pa pa pappy, patty, peppers, and onions. So I guess you add water, it's dehydrated. I kind of want to buy some of these just to try it. Ooh, I don't know how good biscuits and gravy would be, though. Which one should we try, John? This. Beef stroganoff? This. Well, they're like nine bucks a piece. Let's just get and like... this. Let's get two of them. Okay, so beef stew. Uh-huh. And chili mac and beef. All right, I'm down. Let's try it. Did I ever tell you that I owned a paintball field? Yeah. I owned the biggest paintball field in North Alabama. It really hasn't changed much since back then. We got the Titman 98s right here. That's what we used to rent in our field. God, they still make these? This looks like the Phantom. You guys remember the Phantoms? I just said, John, that Jeep over there is the color of baby poop. But it literally says poop on the back of it. I think they know what they're going for. Very nice, John. No lie, Publix has really good sushi. We gotta get dinner because we don't have anything at home. John, you're gonna get a red snapper for dinner? Yeah. We should I'm, buy one just to like I cut it up and eat it. I put the sushi up that I got. And eat and a red like, snapper? Cook that, like, like Do you know how to prepare a red snapper? No, but Yeah, I don't either. Not. We're just see like, what we can learn. Cut off the head, cut off the tail. Yeah? You Is know, that how you prepare red snapper? Before, right? Is that how you prepare red snapper though? Mm -hmm. I, I don't, you're no, the smart but it could one. Be exactly you're the awesome. smart one in the family, bro. Oh, good morning, everyone. Another day, another dollar. I couldn't really make a daily vlog yesterday, man. I There's just nothing very interesting that happened about yesterday, and I didn't have time to get my bow. So I wanted that to be in the same vlog. So I'm probably gonna go get my bow today because Barefoot Archery opens at 10 a.m. Right now I'm waiting for my favorite brekkie place to open. And I figured I could talk about the YouTube game a little bit. I was thinking about it on the way over here. Is I just, I never talk about YouTube or like give any tips or anything for people out there who are wanting to get into the YouTube game. And I get tons of emails about it all the time. I think one of my biggest tips for YouTube is you don't really have to reinvent the wheel. But at the same time, don't be an unoriginal person. There's a happy middle ground there, I believe. Like, don't take other people's videos and copy them. I don't wanna sound like I'm saying copy other people. Like, I do police breakdowns on the main channel. Active self-protection has been doing shooting breakdowns for years. I just put my style into them. Add a little bit more to it, if that makes any sense. Also, one of the biggest things is don't give up. 
when I did my first shooting breakdown, I was broke as hell. I was living in my mother's basement. I've told this story on stream before. I need to just start telling these stories so, you know, they'll be there on YouTube for people to find instead of me repeating myself a million times. I was policing at the time and my mom and my stepfather were moving to Anderson to live on Lake Hartwell in a nice lake house and it had a basement in it, like a basement apartment, and they were like, hey, do you wanna quit policing and do YouTube full time? And I said, yeah, sure, and live on a lake, that sounds awesome. So yeah, I was living in my mom's basement when I was trying to get YouTube up off the ground, and it was super hard, man. I remember not having any money, YouTube was paying me like $200 a month, and I was like, why Why am I even trying to do this anymore? Why am I even trying? But I just kept pushing, and I kept grinding, and I kept putting out more and more content and trying to better myself. And like, as you can see, it, it's worked out and it's working out because I keep pushing. Just keep content, just keep content. I still have seven minutes for Brecky. I guess that's all for right now. I really want to do this interview with Nick Irving about him being robbed yesterday, but he hasn't contacted me back yet. I really want to get that done before this weekend. Oh yeah, this weekend. Uh, Friday, I'm flying to San Antonio. And then I'm staying with Matt Best that night. And then Saturday, I'm going to be going to Black Rifle Coffee grand opening um, in somewhere around there. And then I'm going to be staying with Matt Best again that night. And then I'm coming back on Sunday. I'm going to vlog the whole thing. And I'm trying to think of like any other kind of content I could possibly make with Matt. I'm drawing a blank. I just, I think it's going to be a badass time hanging out with a dude. If you haven't read his book, Thank you for my service. It's really good. I highly suggest you pick it up. There's a lot of gallows humor in there, which I really appreciate. You guys know I'm all about some really dark humor. Let me know in the comments below if there's any content you can think of that Best and I can knock out together. This music is killing me, but hey, I'm sitting here at Brecky and I'm just kind of looking over some stuff. I didn't realize the title for Matt's new video was 50 Beowulf versus 458 SOCOM, Area 51, Here We Come. So I'm guessing on the next Leo recap, it's going to be how a YouTube title got Matt Carricker sent to Guantanamo Bay. I'm actually pretty proud of myself this morning. Usually I'll have like a beer or two and I'll stay up till two or three in the morning, dicking off and doing whatever instead of just going to bed and waking up at a decent hour. But last night I went to bed at midnight, probably because I'm pretty thrashed from the MMA and BJJ I've been doing the past few days. I'm sore from that and weird places on my body. Like I'm sore in between the webbing of my thumb. Oh, guess who's eating plastic again? Do they seriously have to put not for human consumption on a can of gourmet style crickets? <laughs> just got done at barefoot archery i'll show you my bow in a little bit i don't have time to get it out right now i was busy in there getting it set up with mr jesse smith who owns the place awesome guy really helped me i gotta head over and meet kaylee right now though and then i'll show you guys my new bow september 25th bunker update he's alive and happy and healthy matt <laughs> look at him look at how happy he is and well fed yeah, go, go eat some more of them white crickets in there. We got some crickets for them, but we had to like brush them with calcium powder. So there's a bunch of white crickets hopping around inside there. What are you doing? I'm making some bears. Is that the cool thing right now? Mm-hmm. That's pretty neat. At least you're like crafting and not just playing video games or something. What's the other cool thing you told me the boys are doing? They are um, getting um, scrunchies because of the um, Visco Girls. I memorized that by saying Disco Girls. By yeah. Visco. Ah. Oh my god. Who is it? Kid with a skateboard. John's talking about Visco Girls. He says that the little boys in his school are wearing scrunchies on their wrists because of Visco Girls. And the only reason I know what that is is because Leon Lush just made a video about it. And the way that John described it, that his friend described it, I'm pretty sure this kid watched Leon Lush's video about, about it. You guys wanna see my new bow? This is a Hoyt Carbon RX3. It weighs next to nothing. It is pretty badass, I have to say so myself. So I'm about to throw my hog father back on here. Fine tune it a little bit more. We, we got it like in the rough range of where it needs to be when we were there, but I had to leave early so I can meet Kaylee. 
And I'm gonna throw this up. Jesse at Barefoot told me to just start off at 10 yards for right now and get a really good group with it. And so I guess we're gonna do that and see where we're at. By the way, Jesse, I left one of my good arrows there. Will you keep it safe for me until I come back? Thank you. I kind of figured out what I was doing wrong after the first two because the next three, see, hit pretty much in the center. What I was doing, I wasn't paying much attention to the level that's on my sight, the thing with the little bubble in it. You know, the level. And the bow is catching on to these big luscious lips of mine, so I gotta do this when I shoot. <laughs> I think the sight's pretty much centered in. I'm gonna go back to 20 yards and see what we can do. Well, apparently I shoot tighter groups from 20 than I do 10. That's good to know. <sighs> I just had to go and mess with the optic. Now I'm shooting all Willy Wonky. Crap. All right, instructions again time. I readjusted it after I screwed it all up, and I'm still shooting a little low into the right, but my groups from 10 yards are back to being decent. Now I just gotta figure out how to get them in the center again. Kaylee wants to shoot her bow. Hi, look. What? Some guy said. I said, ah, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so some guy commented on one of my videos and said, oh, I'm gonna take advice from a guy that has a Hitler mustache, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> First time I've ever missed. Oh my god, cat piss ever beans. Oh my god, it's because you called me that. Because <laughs> you are cat piss ever beans. Last group of the night from 10 yards, still trying to sight this in. It's getting better. I felt what I did with this little guy right there, though. I anticipated the shot and jerked down a little bit. It's better to jerk off. 